welcome to another fast tech video in this guide i'm going to be showing you how to fix your ps3 if the hdmi output is no longer working so when the hdmi cable is plugged in and the ps3 is turned on the video does not come on but you hear the ps3 chime as demonstrated here sometimes this problem can be caused by a configuration issue and can be fixed by resetting the ps3 and you can do that by pressing and holding the power button until you hear two beeps and on the second beep you can release the power button if the problem isn't hardware related at this point you should see this screen and you should be able to select yes and get full 1080p output performing this reset did not fix the ps3 that we're going to be working on today which led me to believe that there's a hardware issue with the system a physically broken hdmi port can also cause this problem here are some examples of what broken HDMI ports on PS3s look like. I will do a dedicated video on this in the future. The first thing you'd wanna check is your PS3's HDMI port. And if it looks intact like this one here, the problem is caused by this chip, which I'm gonna show you how to replace from start to finish, including disassembly and reassembly in detail, showing you where each screw goes back in. FastTechStore.com carries all PS3 parts check the links in the description box and the top comment and you can use coupon code YouTube for a discount. All of our parts include a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping and your purchase supports this channel. The PS3 we're going to be working on today is an extremely rare backwards compatible 20 gigabyte model but this video applies to all backwards compatible PS3s. When plugged in HDMI sometimes it would ask us after a reset if we want to use HDMI but when we press yes it goes back to a black screen and we hear the startup sound but nothing comes on this ps3 however does output video with av out which is the old school rca cables pictured on the bottom right corner now if you still got that tube tv kicking around from the early 2000s you should be okay playing in 480p but for most people that is not going to work so let's get that HDMI working again. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is a very rare CECHB console and you can check the serial number back here or down here. This is also a Japanese NTSCJ console which makes it even more rare. To get to the chip, we need to disassemble the entire PS3. So let's start. This seal has to be taken off and then there's a rubber stop that we must pull out. Once we pull out that stop, it's a Torx T8H screw, not a regular T8, that's a T8H that we need to unscrew using our FastTech Pro Toolkit. And then we're going to slide this cover off like so. With that cover off, we're going to use our FastTech Auto Tool, which is going to save us a lot of time when doing electronics disassemblies and remove these long Phillips screws as shown here. There's seven in total. With those screws removed, we can lift up the cover like this. Now we got to remove the disk drive, so let's lift it up. And there's a power cable here. And there's a clip here that we must lift up like this. Now there are four screws on the network module that we must remove to get the network module off. Now this card can be removed by lifting it up and there's a ribbon cable underneath. There's a locking mechanism that we can lift up like this. Next there are five screws on the power supply that must come out so we can get the PSU out of the way. There's a cable at the front here that we can lift up. And then the power supply can be lifted. There's a pinch connector at the back that can be removed like this. Let's take out some of these dust bunnies from the system. Next, we gotta remove this grounding screw. There's a long bolt hiding in here that we must remove. 
Now the rest of these screws must come out. But do not worry about where each screw goes back in as I will be showing you that later in the video because I am a generous and giving person. Now we need to get the hard drive out by lifting up this cover from here and then there's a blue screw that we must remove. With that screw out, we can slide out the hard drive like so. This one still has the original 20 gig. Now let's pull out this ribbon cable and now we can pull up the motherboard and heatsink assembly like this. Now we gotta lift up these two clips to get the back panel off like this. Now these four Phillips screws must be removed. These hold the heat sink against the motherboard. Now this back plate can be lifted off. Considering this system was never opened before we serviced it, it's got dust all over the place and it makes sense because this system is from 2006. Let's disconnect the fan cable, unroute it from here, grab all the wires, wiggle and lift up. Now the heat sink can be pulled off as well. This is the date and time battery. We can pull out the connector like this. Lots of times the bottom part will come off, but that's completely normal considering the system's age. Now we need a size triple zero Phillips from our Fastech Pro toolkit to get these two screws out. Now we're going to be able to remove this plate off like so. The Fastech Pro Toolkit also includes this ESD safe brush, which we're going to use to clean dust off the motherboard. The chip we're trying to get to is hiding underneath here like a coward. So let's remove this piece and expose the chip. Now we're ready to replace the chip with one ordered from FastTechStore.com that comes with a lifetime warranty. We need some liquid flux, which is also available at FastTechStore.com and we're going to cover the sides of the chip with flux as shown here. We're also going to need a hot air station like a FastTech FH1, which is an affordable yet reliable hot air station. If you want one, you know where to go. I set the temperature at 420 as I like to start off slow and that's in degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. But eventually I turned up the temperature a little bit more since this was not cutting the cake. So let's turn this thing up to 500 degrees like that old Tiger track. Let's add more flux as that will help us get the chip off easier. Then I'm going to use my tweezers which are also included in the FastTech Pro Toolkit and get that old chip off. And we're going to grab the new chip and put it where the old chip was. You need stable hands for this step and some patience. You want to make sure that the chip swims like this. When you push it, it should bounce back into its correct position like this. At this point, you want to wait at least 20-30 minutes before you move the motherboard or start reassembling. This is very, very important. At this point, we have successfully replaced our video IC chip. When the board has reached room temperature, you want to move the chip around to make sure it doesn't budge. Now we can clean the flux off with isopropyl alcohol and the FastTech Pro Toolkit brush. Cleaning flux is important as this can be corrosive long term. Since we separated the IHS from the heatsink, we must also replace the 17 year old thermal paste. You can use paper towels and isopropyl alcohol to get it off. We 
We're going to do the same thing on the heat sink. We're going to replace the old paste with Arctic MX-5. Some people just put the heat sink on after putting paste like this, but I like to be more thorough, so I'm going to use the applicator that's included when you order this at FastTechStore.com to spread the paste around evenly across the two internal heat spreaders. This is not the actual surface of the chip, but rather a copper nickel based IHS that is an interface between the heat sink and the CPU and GPU. Arctic MX-5, surprise, surprise, is available at FastTechStore.com and you can use coupon code YouTube for a discount. Any excess paste can be spread on the heatsink like this. Now let's put this cover back on the video chip. Since we are not DK oldies, now it's time to clean up any remaining dust in the system before we reassemble. Isopropyl alcohol can also be used to clean the inside of the case. Now we're going to install this front plate on the motherboard like this. The side where the ports goes on first, like a mask, as shown here. And then the back can be pivoted on like this. Let's connect the clock battery connector on the motherboard like this. The back plate has these teeth that go in these slots on the front plate, like this. Now let's install the heat sink and fan assembly on. And the connector goes in here. The fan wires are meant to be tucked in here. Next we gotta install the heat sink clamp and screws. It's important to tighten these evenly and diagonally and not tighten one fully and then start tightening the other side. That will create uneven pressure on the chips and that's no good. As you can see, I go back and forth ensuring even tightness on each screw. Now it's time to install this part of the case on that has a serial number and it goes on like this. These two small Phillips screws go here. Now we can install the motherboard and heatsink assembly in the case like this. Make sure these two points are up top and then you're going to slide the back in if everything's done correctly like this. This Phillips bolt goes in here. This grounding screw goes here. These two Phillips screws go here and here. The power supply is installed like this and the front connector goes on here. This ribbon cable is supposed to go in here. This is the on off button. The hard drive is going to go in like this, like a bolt action rifle. Now, there are two types of Phillips screws here. One of them is a plastic thread screw, which goes in the motherboard, and the smaller one is for components. So the one that's longer with a plastic thread, this one goes in the following places.
These smaller Phillips screws are for the power supply and other components. The same screws go in the network module, which is this component here. There's a ribbon cable that we must connect by pushing it in, and then there's a locking clip that we must push down, like this. And there are four screws that hold it in. Next, we gotta install the disk drive by lifting up this clip, inserting the ribbon cable all the way into the blue line and pushing the clip down. And now the power cable goes in like this, black wire facing north. Next, we gotta install the top cover. The front goes on first, and then we're gonna pivot the case on like this. These screws are for the case. The longer ones go in the following places. The short screw goes in here. Make sure the T8H is in the sliding case cover like this. And now we can tighten it using a T8H bit from the Fastech Pro Toolkit. You want to make sure this screw is fully tight. This rubber stop goes here. This blue screw is for the hard drive. I'm going to use some Lysol and some paper towels to clean the outside of the case. Now let's put in the hard drive cover and the so-called warranty sticker, which has been expired since 2007. Now we're fully reassembled and ready to test. Let's plug the HDMI cable in and let's fire it up. And it looks like the HDMI port is working as it should and outputting at full 1080p. Looks like this PS3 is fixed. If this content helped you out, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe. I did not install this game as it would have required me to update the PS3's firmware from 3.41 to 4.25, which is not something I wanted to do, as we want to keep this old firmware. This channel has been growing tremendously. I get lots of comments, most of them being positive, and as you can see, I respond to almost every single comment. And every once in a while, I'll get a comment complaining that I advertise my business too much. Man, why do you have to advertise your store to us? I'm just here for the free guy. And to those people I say, Hey, 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 fuck you, man! Who put this thing together? Me! That's who! Who do I trust? Me! Now, to be frank and completely honest, I do like the fact that these videos prevent a lot of these consoles from ending up in landfills, and I do save a lot of people money, but that feeling of satisfaction does not pay the bills. What keeps the lights and cameras running, and what allows me to make these videos, are the sales. So you know what I'm going to say next. FastTechStore.com carries all PS3 parts, and we offer a lifetime warranty and free worldwide shipping. Check the links in the description box and the pinned comment. And use coupon code YouTube for a discount. This is Shiroz from Fast Tech signing out, and I'll see you in the next one.